Welcome along. It's the second match of the day in Group J. Guangzhou go in search of their first points and first goals against a kitschy side who have won two of their opening three matches. We're at the Buriram Stadium in Buriram, or the Thunder Castle, as it's more affectionately known, for another big AFC Champions League clash. So we've reached match day four. Just two games to go after this for the teams in Group J. And if you take a look at the table, you'll see that Cerezo Osaka in control of the group at the moment on 10 points after their win over Port FC earlier. Kichi looking too close, the gap to a point today with a win. Guangzhou looking to get off the mark, but uh, what either happens, sorry, whatever happens to either team, they won't move from their current league positions in the table, whatever the result here today. The sun has gone down, it's just approaching 9 o'clock in the evening local time, still 32 degrees Celsius. It was at around about 38 degrees for the first match earlier. It was stiflingly hot. The players grateful for the drinks break in the first half and every opportunity to take on some water when time allows. Kitchi have invested heavily in their squad, adding Oh, the main man, really, Dejan Damjanovic, 39 goals. And he very much the man to stop Guangzhou. This young side that's been sent over for this competition, they've conceded six goals in their three matches so far. They did restrict Kichi to just the one when the sides met three days ago. But Cerezo Osaka and Port FC already taking points off the side from China entire squad for Guangzhou is under 23s they've got five 16 year olds in the side we've only seen one of those so far Port though have their eyes on a knockout round place it would be massive for Hong Kong football if they could do that Only the third edition of an AFC Champions League since it's switched to this form in 2002 to actually feature Hong Kong team. It was a historic win for them. They got underway against Port FC. Chi's big rivals, Eastern, did play Guangzhou in the 2017 Champions League. They lost 7-0 away from home and 6-0 at home. But this Kitchi side is a much better proposition. They have made changes today. We'll confirm the team news for you in just a moment or two's time. Substitutes in the stand already, socially distanced, of course. All these teams staying in secure bubbles at the hotels. All the COVID protocols in place, temperatures taken on arrival. Masks must be worn when you're not on the pitch as well. And it's a tournament that has passed off very successfully so far, as most of the groups either reach or are past the halfway stage. Just the two games for you today, four games Coming up tomorrow, it's in groups H and G for you tomorrow. We'll tell you about those a little bit later on. It's not only hot for the players, it's hot for the camera guys that bring these fantastic pictures to you that have beamed around the world. They've been here since early on today, of course, already done one match. This is the second match of two inside this Buriram Stadium. All credit to them for their efforts over the past 10 days or so. Only worked in the heat, they've also worked in the monsoon conditions that we've had to endure on a couple of occasions as well. Here comes the blue AFC flag, will herald the arrival of the two teams in just a moment.
not too much breeze around tonight, not too much helping to bring down the temperature. Port substitutes there, they'll hope to and run out a little bit later on. I mean, it's too much squad rotation from either of these sides so far, but making changes today. They are playing games every three days, of course. It does sap the energy. One or two injury issues, one or two suspension issues for certain teams mean that they do have to make changes. Familiarity for these two, having met just three days ago. Before he nearly forgot the match ball, helps. Yeah, Kitchi with that narrow 1 0 win. It's a resilient display from this young Guangzhou side. Zhang, the goalkeeper, has had a good tournament so far. Saved a penalty in the opening match against Port, despite the fact they lost by two goals to nil. by three goals to nil, sorry, in the port game. And he kept the score down as best he could, and he's made some important saves, particularly in the last match as well. Obviously, no supporters in at the moment, so the supporters of both these teams will be settling down in front of their televisions to watch proceedings unfold. Let's take a look at the teams. Kitchi making five changes to the lineup that started three days ago. Roberto, Gan, Huang, who captains the side, Alex and Yat all come into the starting lineup today. They join the AFC Champions League's leading scorer, Dejan Damjanovic, who has 39 goals so far and counting up front today. Alex Akande, who starts for the first time, the man born in Lagos, who has played twice off the bench. Referees Kamis Mohamed Al Mari from Qatar. All top FIFA officials in this competition. Four changes for the Guangzhou lineup today made by the coach Liu Xi Yi, Zhu Wenjie, Chao Jian Grand, Li Ji Hao all make first starts. There's a recall for Ruan Sai, who sat out the last match. Fan Hengbo captains the team. He started every game so far, as has goalkeeper Chang. There are the rest of the players on the bench. Clayton had started every game so far. He's on a yellow card, though, as had Rabayena. Regulars in the starting lineup for Kitchi, but probably having a little bit of a rest today as well in this one. They'll be needed for the remaining games, and of course, Kitchi take on Port FC next. But then a massive game, their final group game is against Cerezo Osaka, and that could determine the destination of top spot and the place in the knockout stages of the AFC Champions League. They need to win here first, though, they need to see off the challenge of this young Guangzhou side, who, if nothing else, will play very much on enthusiasm I don't know any different, such a young age squad that's at average age is around about 21. And they could like make life difficult for Kitchi. So it was a tough battle in the first match. Will be Guangzhou to get us underway then in the red shirts, kicking from left to right in the first half. It's match four in Group J in the AFC Champions League against a Kitchi side who would close the gap on Cerezo Osaka to a point with a win. And as I say, it could be a straight head-to-head -head between them and the Japanese in the final match of the season. Or the final match of the group stage, should I say. It's hammered away by Chu. Early touch for Paolo Cesar in the Kitchi goal. 
he's ever present. He's only conceded two goals, the two in the defeat to Cerezo Osaka. They've kept clean sheets against Port and against Guangzhou so far. Testament to a, a very strong back four. Helio and Roberto at the back today. It's Huang. Captain's armband today for Huang Yang. By comparison, there are several 30 pluses in the Kitchi side, adding that experience. Alex Chew has assembled, assembled a good squad. He's had good investment, spent big to bring the likes of Dejan in. And if they could get through to the group stages, that sort of spending and investment will be absolutely justified. shoulder of Li Zhihan. Was born in Brazil but now has a Hong Kong passport. Helio. There's Zi Zi Yu, one of the assistants to Fabio Cannavaro in the Guangzhou first team. So the Chinese Super League suspended at the moment just to because of the COVID issues. One of the young squatters over here getting some experience. One or two players looking to play their way into the manager's thoughts. There's Matoor, who still hasn't scored yet, but had one or two good chances in the last game. Got himself into some great goal scoring positions. Alex Yat with a clearance, appeared in all three games previously off the bench. Getting a first start today. Side, it'll be Tong with the throw to Quang. Slight change in formation to what we were expecting. Alex and Kande playing just in behind Dejan. This is all for the low cross. Also started with the lone striker, Juan Kezu. Just feel they need the boost of a goal, Guangzhou. It's been a frustrating three matches for them when they've been unable to find a way through. Kit 
she had 24 shots in the first match between these two sides. Just a one shot from Guangzhou in that first game. Yanovic's penalty proving to be the difference. He ironically scored that record-breaking goal. He's 39th in the AFC Champions League. In the game they actually lost against Cerezo Osaka. Chinese opposition in 2018 in the group stage, Tianjin Kuanjian. Lost both games there, 3 0 and 1 0. So they've already got points on the board, which is good for them. Did become the first seed from Hong Kong to win an AFC Champions League match in 2018 when they beat. Japan's Kashiwa race on. Forward by Tom. A candy. Huang. Helio. Yat. To release it early. Might get a second chance, Yat. Or. One of the 20 year olds in the squad, he's only just 20, turned 20 on the 22nd of June. Li Ji Hao. A candy, nicely done, finds himself a little bit of space here, needs some quality on the cross. Deshan didn't catch it cleanly, and Chang able to gather in goal. Great work by Akande. Dejan, for once, didn't make a clean contact with that, otherwise it would have been another goal for him. Just scuffed the shot, got in between Chang Zhili and Wang Wenxuan. Fairly easy save. akande has gone down injured under Chu's challenge. Guangzhou will put the ball out so he can get some treatment if required. Work from Alex Akande, the man born in Lagos. Had a spell at Walton Forest in English non league football before moving to Hong Kong in 2008. Played for Tai Chung when he first moved out this way. There was the challenge. Didn't seem too much in it. He's played for Kitchen three different spells now. Alex Akande. Two of these players who haven't had a chance yet will see this is a as a good chance to impress the coach. So Kande has made two appearances off the bench. Gan, who's coming in the midfield today, wearing 16, hasn't played a single minute up until this match. Good chance for him. There's Chao Wen Jay. There is Gan. Now a candy. To use his pace against Lin Jin Tao, felt he was fouled. He really disagrees. Guangzhou have lost three games for the first time ever consecutively in the AFC Champions League. They've never failed to score in four matches in a row either. Learning curve for these young players, that's for sure. That's out of the reach of Chao Wen Che. Just getting their careers off and running, of course. Some of the players on the field today, like Dejan Damianovic, who's 39, are probably approaching the end of theirs, but Damianovic still scoring goals, three already in this tournament. Roberto is the only other goal scorer for Kichi so far. 
Dejan. Chu was nice and tight. Yet. Blocked by Li Jihan. Closing down pretty quickly at the moment, Guangzhou. It's one thing that they don't like, that's fitness and the ability to, to work hard for 90 minutes, whatever the weather conditions. It's Guangzhou used to be known as Guangzhou Evergrande, changed the name in January this year, just to Guangzhou FC. Only Chinese club to win the AFC Champions League twice. The referee will pull that back for a foul. Two thousand and thirteen, two successes in this competition. <laughs> Mentioned how many Eastern section winners there have been in this competition. Of course, Olsen Hyundai from Korea are the current holders of the AFC Champions League. Last. Western winners, if you like, were Al Halal from Saudi Arabia in 2019. Prior to that, you have to go all the way back to 2011 when Al Saad from Qatar beat John Book Motors on penalties after a 2 2 draw. Fan Heng Bo. Good ball. I almost fell for Juan and Keizu. Moore just had his shirt to when he's too wriggle his way free though. Good play from Matt good play too from Wang Wen Shuan who guides it back to his goalkeeper. Chan has been impressive. He's made some good saves despite the fact he's not kept a clean sheet as yet. It was unfortunate in the very first game against. Surazo Osaka when he saved Tiago's header, but he could only push it onto the underside of the bar and the ball bounced over the line. Saved a penalty from Sergio Suarez in the game against Port FC. Still hasn't ended up on the winning side yet, though. Helio. Roberto. No one far enough forward to challenge that loose ball. Side penalised. Started two of the three of the four games now. Ruan side. Roberto, another Brazilian ball player in the Kitchi squad that now has a Hong Kong passport. Along with Helio, his defensive partner. Yeah. Top. Kande, nice touch. Trying to thread that through for Deja, but too much on it again.
It's quite interesting to watch the ethos of clubs. They tend to play the same style from top to bottom in the club. Guangzhou, as we've seen throughout this tournament, love to play out from the back, and that can often be problematic. But normally a coach, i.e. Fabio Cannavaro, would insist that all the teams within the club play the same format. So when he brings players through, that they know what kind of system they're playing and they can drop into it. You don't see goalkeepers kicking long very often these days. In fact, a lot of goalkeepers are actually encouraged to play outfield in training to get them used to passing and playing with the ball at their feet, which is something that old-fashioned goalkeepers haven't had to do. It's a whole new game these days, is Helio. Especially now the ball doesn't have to leave the penalty area from a goal kick. It's made a world of difference. So one or two embarrassing moments as well through to that. Played by Chang Jili. Can they try to close Chang down? Keeper got there first and gets the ball clear. Tom. Roberto. Huang. Ah, Helio. Good ball, Dejan, three in the centre, if he can come up with a cross, which he can't. Good play from Chu. The obligatory hands behind the back to make sure he's not running the risk of giving away a penalty and blocks the ball away for a throw. Tom Kin Man forward to take the throw. Loops up just out of the reach of Deja. Or just falling backwards a little and into the side netting from Ho. It's taken a deflection. Yep, just a little nick off Chao Wen Che. Always Munda. What he's got to do is to score in this. He helped it on there for, for Ho, but he had chances in the last match. It will be Ho to take the corner once the referee has stopped for pushing and shoving. It's very physical in that. Dashan trying to get away from his man. Getting away from in front of the goalkeeper. Back in by Akande. He's dropping into no man's land. Feng Heng Abo just to get the ball away. Well, they've defended that well, Guangzhou. There was so much pushing and shoving going on. The referee saw nothing to give a free kick either way. Fan Heng Bo. Good ball, oh, what a chance. Wang Keizo just got something on that, but not enough to get the header on target. Great ball in. It's Ruan Sai, I think, that played the ball in, and he pulled away from his man, Helio. And that's probably one of the clearest chances Guangzhou have had in all four matches so far. Still can't hit the target, but oh, the agony on the sidelines for the coach. What a moment that would have been for Quang Kezu if he'd have hit the target. Oh, that'd be a warning to Kitching. Don't take this for granted. Only 1 0 when the sides met three days ago, don't forget. Oh. Oh, great ball. Deja just getting a little frustrated in the middle at the moment. Out of Huang. Oh. 
Chia based in Kowloon, which is directly north of Hong Kong Island. Won the Hong Kong League ten times, having been founded back in the early 1930s. Won the Hong Kong Premier League this season by three points from Eastern. As we've mentioned earlier in the tournament, just 12 goals conceded in 17 matches. really was a title decider the final game of the season they went into it level on points with second place Eastern but two Dejan goals earning them the title taking him up to 17 in the league in 14 appearances defending to do though for Kitchi at the moment should be too close to the keeper Paolo Cesar makes a, a comfortable take the Hong Kong Brazilian making up the the spine of the team at the back. It's Dejan's header. Fan Hengbo. Good low centre of gravity. Easy to turn away from his man. Chang Jili. Well, the good ball. Palace as Ar comes flying out and gets good distance on the punch. Chao Wenche. Challenge was by Ho. And Kande. Guangzhou have started brightly, shown in patches that here to make up the numbers. Dejan felt he'd had his shirt soaked, was waiting for a whistle, which never came. Comfortable for the goalkeeper. I think he'll be happy with his team's performance so far, Li Ji Yi. He's appointed assistant coach at Guangzhou three years ago on New Year's Day. Taking charge of this team in his own right. There's Fan Hengbo. Wriggle away from his man again. Deja holding a deeper position. And Gan. Now Tom. Quiet. Nicely played off by Ho. Deja. Nice turn. Shot took a deflection. Quang when Schwang got across. That's where it is. He's dangerous. Deja. Great with his back to goal. Born in Mostar in Bosnia. Former Montenegrin international. Scored at Wembley a few years ago in a World Cup qualifier to uh, get a 1 1 draw. Had scored 12 goals in his last six games coming into this tournament. 3 and 3 here. Tricky carry to his movement. He's brilliant when he hasn't got the ball. Dejan again. Looked away in front of goal. Had to be a foul by Huang. Wang Yang had started two of the three matches. Played for Hong Kong in their three World Cup qualifiers recently against Iran, Iraq. Two of them. Get 
Here's Roberto. Guangzhou have slowly clawed their way back into the game in terms of possession. You saw the passes a moment or so ago. They're not a million miles behind their Hong Kong opponents. Haven't been overawed in terms of possession so far. They've had getting on for 45%. Still trailing the opposition, but not by much. Two shots each as well. Not out of this. Chang Jili. Jintao. So no Hong Kong side had ever scored against the team from China before. Their winner on match day three. That's a lovely ball through. A shot just on target from Fan Heng Bo. But a couple of times now, Guangzhou have found space in between those Kichi defenders. And slightly better finishing, they could well be in front. Fan Heng Bo maybe had more time than he wanted. Split the two defenders. But it's sliced away off the outside of his boot and behind for a goal kick. Frustrating for the coach to get them in that position and then be unable to capitalise. Still nil-nil. At the first man by Chao Wenche. Disappointing ball in from Ngan. Top for Fan Hengbo, goalkeepers just misjudged that and gathers and then spills the ball under pressure from the Guangzhou captain. He felt he was fouled. It's a complete misjudgment by Paolo Cesar. The ball just popped up higher than he thought. We saw one of those in the game three days ago when Port scored from in their own half. Pakon Prempak against Kenya, the Cerezo goalkeeper, the ball bounced up higher than he was expecting and ended up in the back of the net. Guangzhou's first corner of this first half. Four players in the middle, one on the post. Now there's a bit of movement. Give up! Heard the shout straight into the arms of Paolo. Disappointing delivery from the corner. Here's a Kande. Had been carrying a little bit of a back injury, which is why he'd only featured off the bench in the opening three matches, Alex Akande. Fit enough to start for the first time today, though. Good challenge by all. So a little bit of hesitation from Rand Sai when he was on the ball. Gan. Shinichi Yat. Helio. Quang. Roberto. Quang. It's that midfield pivot in front of the, the back four, looking to play balls left and right to Orin Yet on this near side and Ho and Alex on the other. Straight down the middle this time, looking for Deja. Yet. Deja. That's a good ball for Tong. Oh. Bobbling around in the middle. 
No one able to get a touch. Dejan couldn't quite get there before Chang Zhili hooks it away. Helio, good spell of pressure this from Kitchi. Fallon Helio by Wang Wen Xuan. Just late. I think he could stop himself, to be honest. But uh, quick to be sporting and going off for a hand of friendship. Accepted by Helio. Games have been played in a really good spirit. And I know I mentioned it before and don't really want to sound like a broken record, but the standard of refereeing has been superb in all the games so far. They've tried to keep the game flowing, tried to play advantage. Not too many yellow cards. Very impressive, and no VAR, of course, so they have to get the decisions right at the first time ask of asking, which invariably they've done. <laughs> Foul on all. So you can't fault the work ethic of these Guangzhou players. Paolo will build from the back once again. Roberto. Bring the ball down under control. A chance for Juan Keiju. Another foul given away by Deja this time on Ruan Sai. Quickly taken. Chao Wen Che. Away by Yat. Wang Wen Xuan. Uh, Chang Jili. <laughs> Chang Jili looking long again on the chest of Yat. Richards just swarming around that midfield area at the moment, pushed out wide by Ruan Sai. Held up by Wang Tianqing. Ruan Sai. Three in the middle, Ruin Sai making himself available. Fan Heng Bo will allow that to go out for a throw in. Fan Heng Bo. You can see what he was trying to do, but it just went into a little bit of traffic, which meant that there's no clear chance for the shot or Fan Hengbo Guangzhou have shown a little bit of composure at times Seeing a lot of the ball at the moment, Kitchi just having to soak up a little bit of pressure. Tenth appearance in the tournament for Guangzhou. Reached the semi finals in 2019, Guangzhou. Last out to Urawa, Red Diamonds. 
didn't qualify through the group stages last season either. They finished third behind Vissel Kobe and Siwon Blue Wings. Only managed one win in the group stage last year. It's been a disappointing couple of campaigns for them. First time they'd ever lost three consecutive games coming into this. Show working hard, forcing Kichi to play backwards rather than forwards. Can't do any damage when you're in your own half. Or Yat. Side. Dejan put his shot wide anyway, but the flag was up on the far side. Away from all. Heavy touch. Foul on Matul by Quan Keishu. Attacking from the wrong side, you never want to get away with that. Over the top from Yat towards Orr. Always favouring the defender. Well, he's seen his side create a couple of chances in the first half, Li Zhi Ying. Haven't taken them, but they've got in the positions, and that's sometimes what this game's all about. Get yourself in scoring positions, and the chances will come. Something they haven't managed to do in their previous games. So just one shot in the first match between the sides three days ago. Kichi will be disappointed that they've not got themselves in front, but there's time yet before half time. It's Yat trying to feed it in. Dejan pointing where the ball should have gone. Chow and Che. Zeke the corner. Yet with a corner, no holding, says the ref. I'm watching. Yet's ball in, header took a deflection. It is out of the penalty area, but not very far. Quang. Yet. Good ball in, came off a. Guangzhou head though, it was away by Huang Kei Chi. Back on defensive duty. <laughs> Another corner to defend here as we approach half time. Still nil nil. At the Thunder Castle between Kichi and Guangzhou. Guangzhou have acquitted themselves well in this first half. Four shots each, only one on target. That's come from Kitchi in the first half. Keeper waits. Hey, by Chu. Top. 
Good play down that far side, sliding challenge from Fan Heng Bo, who's injured himself in the process. Don't know if he just landed heavily there, the captain. He just got his arm kicked as challenge came in. So it was certainly no malice from Tong, he was literally trying to get out of the way. It's been a frustrating first half so far for Dejan Damjanovic, hasn't had too much service. Helio explaining what should be happening. Chao and Che just like, like he's uh, limping a little bit at the moment as well. Players glad of an unofficial water break with the temperature up in the low 30s at the moment. He's OK, Fan Heng Bo. Defended again. Bodies back behind the ball when they need to, Guang Zhou. So it was a battle when the sides met the first time. Goal did come early, 36 minutes when Damjanovic scored three days ago. Looks as though they might get through to half time unscathed here, Guang Zhou. Candy. Yet. Just an additional minute at the end of the first half. She had been frustrated. That's a poor ball as well by Huang. Is there one last chance for Kitchi before half time? Yat's ball is. Comfortably dealt with by Wang Wen Chuan. Trying to get inside the fullback, Li Ji Hao. Okay. Well, there goes the whistle. Kitchi need to win, really, to close the gap on Cerezo Osaka who currently top the group, but they've been frustrated by a very stubborn Guangzhou side in this first half. Just a goal in it when they met three days ago. No goals in this one so far, but Guangzhou, who've worked hard, battled hard, and had two chances in that first half as well, which they weren't able to take. All to play for in the second half here at the Thundercastle. Half-time, it's Kitchi nil, Guangzhou nil. Thank <laughs> you. 
Still, we wait the breakthrough on match day four. Team's out for the second half. Dejan Damjanovic hasn't had too much in the way of service in that first half. He only needs half a chance, we know that. 39 goals in his AFC Champions League career. Now the leading scorer in the competition. He's been a good goal scorer for Kitschi over the years as well. Change for Guangzhou at half time. He shall in, comes on. One of the younger members of the squad. They have got those five 16 year olds in the squad. He's 18 years of age. Hey, Shalin. On for the second half. Kitchi have also made a change as well. Raul Baena, who'd started the previous three games, has come on. Again, we'll confirm in just a second who has gone off. No goals after the first half. It's Kitschi all in blue, kicking from left to right in the second half at the Thundercastle. The breath of Burry Ram. Kitschi need the points. Just remind you, they currently four points behind Cerezo Osaka after Cerezo's win earlier on. The J-League's top scorer, Shito Akubo, among the goals in a 3-0 win over Port FC from Thailand a little earlier on today. Searing heat here, 38 degrees for that opening ga game. Ngan has gone off for Raul Baena, who comes on in the centre of midfield. Straight away at the start of the second half, there's a free kick here for Kitchi, which Ho Chun Ting will take. Comfortable for the goalkeeper. There's no real conviction in the final third at the moment from Kitchi. We've seen some good approach play. Quan Kei Chu is the man that's gone off for Guangzhou, by the way. Thought he had a good half actually up front, leading the line on his own. It's a first appearance in the competition for Hei Shaolin. Is all. Another good ball. A Kande trying to not that one, one back across. A Kande and Orr have swapped sides at the start of the second half. That's through to Chang. Yeah, Kande trying his luck over on the far side, on the left, with all coming over to the right. A bit of a tactical switch from Alex Chu. As Hong Kong did bid to try and host one of the groups in the AFC Champions League when they were put out to tender back in March, but the AFC decided to go with the three groups in Thailand and a couple of groups in Uzbekistan. The Hong Kong officials were hoping it was going to be the, well, the start of some sense of normality, really, after the COVID pandemic, getting things back to normal in terms of hosting big sporting events. Fan Heng Bo has stayed down injured, not for the first time, Raul Bayena. Can't get the ball across. Well, they will clear the ball out so the captain can get some treatments. He injured his arm in the first half. Fan Hengbo needed treatment and he's been caught again. He looks in some pain. There's a challenge from Huang Yang, the captain. Just seemed to get his ankle caught between his two the two legs of the Kitchi midfielder, which ended up being almost one of those scissor type challenges. Again, no great malice in it. So, a reminder of the standings in the group at the moment as it stands Cerezo Asaka top with 10 points. Kitchi in the live league table would have seven because they're drawing nil nil here, obviously. Port with four, and Guangzhou would be picking up their first point if it stays like this. We're looking at the moment for someone to try and break Japanese and Korean dominance in the groups. Each group has either a Japanese 
or a Korean team on top of the group at the moment. Olsen Hyundai, Nagoya Grampus, Jumbuk Motors, Kawasaki Frontale or Cerezo Osaka. Kichi hoped to break the balance. A team from Hong Kong has never qualified for the knockout stages of the AFC Champions League. Love to have been a fly on the wall at half time. I'm sure Lee Ji Yu was saying to his team, look, more of the same. Resilience. We've been good at the back. We've created a few a couple of openings. But they know that there's quality in this kitschy side. They've got quality on the bench as well. Yats ball in. Finds Ralph Baena. Blocked away. I thought there was a hint of handball in there for a second. Baena seemed to half appeal. And the man that came on at half time has had the clearest chance of the second half so far. Ralph Baena again. Brilliant ball in looking for Deja. Good defending though. Huang. It's gone all the way back to Paolo. Great work by Hei Shaolin who came on at half time. Easy, easy. So the temperature has dropped a little from what it was for that opening game, just the 32 degrees uh, where we started the match. It may have gone a little bit cooler now. The temperature doesn't drop too much here in this part of the world in the evenings, especially at this time of year. Here's that shot from Raul Baena. That's a good block. Chu getting across with a challenge. Raul Baena had started. All three matches prior to tonight, and born in Malaga. Here's Roberto. Reminder, it is eight teams that go through. Group winners automatically, three of the best second place finishers. And the, the round of 16 is played in two halves, the Eastern teams and the Western teams going up against teams from their own section before the groups are mixed up for the quarter-finals. Draws already been made for the Western section, the likes of Al-Hilal from Saudi Arabia and strong Iranian contingent, Tractor Estiglal and Persepolis, the beaten finalist from last year, already through. Al Wada from the UAE, who were forced to pull out last year because of the COVID problems. Deeper corner, sail out of play though. And a real glare from Dejem Damjanovic to Yat on the far side. Kitchi will see this as an opportunity missed if they can't manage to take three points. The youthful exuberance of this Guangzhou side have battled hard today. So they only lost by that penalty goal in the first match three days ago between the sides. And they're still playing the ball around with a little bit of confidence. That's a lovely turn from Dejan. Or four blue shirts in the centre. Or might for go for goal himself. Little chip up too high for a Kande. And Orr's decision making once again, just letting him down at the last minute. He got into some really good positions in the first match between the sides, but he just couldn't find a way through. Let's see what he was trying to do there. Put that on the head of Alex Akande, but miscued him. Go on his own here. Alex Akande! Oh, he's put it wide. Clear his chance in the second half so far. 
made by Dejan Damjanovic this time. But Alex Sikande has just helped him wide of the post. Great running from Akande, got in between the two defenders. There's no way Chang would have got across to make the save if that was on target. And a glorious chance has gone begging for Kitchi. to do here, trying to get a four-man wall organised. Three Guangzhou players standing. Clearly in an offside position at the moment. This is something they've obviously worked on on the training ground. Be interesting to see what they do with this. Two in front of the wall, two behind the wall. Kichi not quite sure who to mark and who not to mark. Three kick goes through the wall. Another player's ducked out of the way. The blue shirts have managed to reign supreme at the back and get that ball away. Not very far though. Hey Shaolin. Feng Heng Bo can't get there. The loose ball hooked away by Tom. It's out of play. Good defending. Had plenty of bodies back behind the ball. Dejan forced to come back on defensive duty as well. Kitchi became one of the most prominent teams in Hong Kong after their return to the top flight in 2003. And three trophies in two seasons back then, but early part of the, the 2000s and the Dejan Antonic. It's been a steady climb for them ever since. That's a good turn by all. What can he do this time? Good challenge. Wang Chiangqing. Through the defence once again, away from He Shaolin. Played in the 2017 qualifiers. Kichi beat the Vietnamese side Hanoi, lost out in the playoff round to Olsen Hyundai on penalties. to take the corner. Why by He Shaolin. Ho might get a second chance to cross too close to the keeper, into the side netting, in fact. from, or by Roberto, rather. Still looking to get red shirts forward here, Guangzhou, there. Desperate to try and get themselves in front. Oh, 
Hey! On by Rob, by Aina. Chip over the top for Orr to chase, but Wang Chiang King will get there first. Players up with him here. Lin Jintao. Quickly closed down. Too many defenders back behind the ball. Didn't really give you much time on the ball. Went for the early shot. Ralph Baena. Lovely ball. Or Dejan's in the middle. A Kande there as well. Dejan. Flag stays down. And the flag has gone up after Dejan played the ball. Flag does didn't. The flags do tend to stay up a little bit longer these days. They'll go up a little bit later rather. Dejan back to goal, oh, goes down too easily. Didn't even look at the referee, knew he wasn't going to get a penalty. Sign up. A player whose name will be familiar to you back in 2018, Kitchi, to prepare for their Champions League campaign. One Diego Forlan, the Uruguayan striker who scored goals for Manchester United, scored 74 for Atletico Madrid. Only played eight league games for them, did score five times in those eight games, didn't really help them in the Champions League campaign when they finished bottom of the group. Did become the first side from Hong Kong ever to record a win in the AFC Champions League in that 2018 campaign when they beat Kashima Raisal. Didn't get much joy after that. John Book Motors and Tianjin Quanjin. The sides all finishing above them. Another free kick to Guangzhou. Started to utilize their substitutes now. Kitchi Clayton is going to come on. Another player that had started all three games so far. He's their most creative through midfield. He and Ralph Baena back together. This is Lee Jihao. Just rush that one. Here comes the change. It is Ho that's going off. And Clayton coming on, so he, Ralph Baena with Wang in the middle, Dejan and Orr and Alex up ahead of them. Played in the lower leagues in Brazil all his career, Clayton, until he moved to Hong Kong a couple of years ago. Had a season at Luen Long before he joined Kitchi. Here he is on the ball now, wins a corner. Trying to throw it in the corner. Right by the flag. Clayton's offside. To his surprise, as you can hear. No 
was a little bit close to the assistant on this near side. He can afford to smile about it, but well, was Clayton offside? I don't know. We might see it again. He wasn't convinced. The well, flag had already gone up by that point. Who, me? Yes, you, Mr. Clayton. Here he is again. Looking for a candy. That might fall for Dejan. Hooked away by Wang Wenchuan. <laughs> Chang Juli spins on the spot, wins the free kick. You just sense there's a little more belief around Guangzhou in this game. A couple of times in previous games they've looked a little bit rabbit in the headlights when teams have been attacking them, but they've certainly been a bit more composed on the ball today. Getting some game time, some of these players, and just easing their way into the side. They certainly haven't disgraced themselves, despite the fact they haven't won or haven't scored yet. We all know about the young squad. And at the moment, they could be causing a could be deemed as a bit of an upset by holding Kichi to a point. Kichi know that they have to win to keep in touch with Cerezo or Saka. Those two will play each other on the final group game, which, well, depending on how results go, could well determine who finishes top of this group. Fan Hengbo. Clayton. Akande. A player down injured. <laughs> the the Kitchi players were too happy there. And Kande put the ball out of play. A little bit of treatment needed. Hey, Shaolin. Just gives me a chance to tell you about four games tomorrow for you. Groups H and G. Gambara Saka against Shanghai United. Tampinas Rovers against Jombuk Hyundai. And then in Group G, Ratchaburi against Pohang Steelers, Nagoya Grampus against Johor, Darul Tazim. Those are the fifth games in that group. That'll be the first group to finish. Li Jihao is coming off. And it's Ning Hao Shu that's coming on for a fourth appearance off the substitutes bench. Came on at half time in the first two matches. Wang Wenxiu, Mishuan, cleared out of play on that far side. Oh. Side. Just need to keep their discipline, Kitchi. Just get a little bit exuberant. Balls offside a moment ago, perhaps proving that. Here's Dejan. Of course. By Chu. <laughs> clever play by Damianovic. Chu giving away the free kick. And Clayton over the free kick. We've seen some good deliveries from Clayton in the previous matches. Is this the moment for Kitchi to take the lead? Goes right the way across, and Kande appeals for handball, and the referee, who is right on the spot, gives the penalty. Well, it's harsh on Chang Zhili. He came at him with pace. It was very difficult for him to get out of the way. See where it struck his arm. Yeah, the arm's away from the body. It's just hitting below that line of the shirt. 
And under the current laws, that is a handball and a penalty and a chance for Kitchi from the spot. It was a penalty that wrapped up the points in the first game early on in the first half. And now, past the midway points in the second half, it's another chance for Dejan Damjanovic to take his tally to four goals in four games and reach the 40 mark. And he continues to break new ground as the leading scorer in the AFC Champions League. Chang has already saved one penalty from Sergio Suarez of Port FC. It's Dejan against Chang. High into the net. And the Montenegrin puts his side in front and they'll breathe a huge sigh of relief, having been frustrated for nearly 70 minutes here. Dejan gets his second penalty of the competition. Lucky for Chang, who went the right way. But there was too much pace on it from Dejan. 40 goals now in this competition. Cerezo Osaka at the top of the group. Takes them on to nine points if it stays this way. Kitchi will take on Port FC in their penultimate game while they'll meet Cerezo in the last game. And as we mentioned earlier on, that could be a cracker because the winner could really take all in that game. A point might be enough for the Japanese if results go to current form, but you never know. Hang Show have given a good account of themselves today. You have to feel a little bit sorry for these young players. They came here, they were given a job to do, the young under 23 side. And they've been outpowered and outmuscled at the moment by the experience of Kitchi. This is a Kande. Dejan goes outside him. A Kande! Good save, Chang. It's a good hand by the goalkeeper. Strong wrist to push that away from danger. Clayton with a foul. It's always a sign of a, a goalkeeper who's received good coaching when they push a shot to the side rather than back out into play. That's a very good stop by Chang at full stretch. Best effort we've seen so far from Akande. There was a little bit of a worry about Kitchi who hadn't played since the end of the Hong Kong season. That victory over Eastern that wrapped up the title. They did go out of the Sapling Cup by their great rivals, Eastern. Heading for a third win in four games here, if they can hold on. They've got 18 minutes to go. Yeah, Jin Tao just trying to wriggle his way down the line, just ran out of space. Fang <laughs> Feng, Fan Heng Bo, just challenged on the edge of the area, Lin Jin Tao. Fan Heng Bo again. Plenty of players back, that was Wang that got the challenge in. Referee plays advantage as Chang Jili went down. Chance for a cross hit. Too high for Wang Chiang King. Just out of play. So there's no disgrace for these Guangzhou players. I think it's very much a case of watch this space with some of these players. They've clearly got some talent among them. And I'm sure. Fabio Cannavaro, who will be keeping an eye on proceedings from afar, will be looking at some of these players when he's trying to integrate new players into his starting lineup. Thinking there's something about this squad. 
It's been a frustrating day for the captain, Fan Heng Bo, who literally has given his all. Chu. Down the line by Yat. Matur. Off the heels of Wang Wenshan. Ransai. Caught by Clayton. No foul. This is Dejan. Long way out. Just wide. He sensed up until the penalty goal a little bit of frustration in Dejan Damjanovic's play. He was not getting the service he wanted, and now I think he's just decided to take shots on on his own. Had a look up to see where Chan was. Kande went across in front of the keeper just to try and unsight him. That was just a metre or so wide from the competition's leading scorer. Ball time leading scorer, should I say. Foul on Lin Jin Tao. Clayton's made the difference since coming on, as has Raul Baena. <laughs> Guangzhou still have Cerezo Osaka to play in three days' time, and they finish their campaign off against Port. Can they get a goal? Can they get a point? It'd be so nice for them just to have that little bit of a boost. Still pressing here, there's no saying they won't get an equaliser. Ruan side with the ball in. Berto's header. It's away by Raul Baena. Deja. Good play. You heard all then saying, I'm on the way. Clayton goes down the inside. Good challenge. Brilliantly cut out. Here come Guangzhou again, still full of running. Gonna make a double change in a minute, Guangzhou. For the moment, though, play continues. Pushed out wide by Chang Jili. Chao Wen Che. Chang Jili. Chu, Wang Tianqing, Fan Heng Bo goes down the outside, almost acting as a decoy, trying to take Tom with him. So I think the coach will make the changes now. Li Jingjian is coming on. Run Sai is one of those going off. Liao Jintao also going off. And the other substitution, Chu in Shi. There's the player coming on. So Lee comes on for his first appearance. He is just 16 years of age. First appearance for the Guangzhou first team. One of the up and coming youngsters. Got a very good academy, Guangzhou. Looking to bring players through. It's got a history of youngsters coming through the ranks. It's away by Wan Tianqing. It's Dejan. Lovely ball, waited perfectly for Matt Orr. Clayton, Yat, Raul Baena. Angled in again towards a Kande, didn't quite have the, the height on it. Driven back across goal by Tom. Tom might get a second chance, and Kande was just offside, had to scrabble back a bit. Clayton. Tom. And off the back of Fan Heng Bo. Handball. 
Hey, Charlene. It's Tom. It's all kitschy at the moment. Clayton. Defending again by Fan Heng Bo. Kande. Just a little bit too exuberant in the back of Wang Tian King. I think when Kitchi do an inquest into this, they'll say that they've been worked very hard by this Guangzhou team over the 180 minutes of the two matches. 1 0 in the first game, 1 0 in the second game, both penalties. Whether we'll see. One or two changes for the next game as well, with the fact that that Cerezo game could be so pivotal in the last game of the sea, in the last game of the uh, group stage, rather. Nice touch by Dejan to Yat, trying to feed it out to Orr. Go back to Chang. Foul by Tong. Inside the final ten minutes, Guangzhou trailing by a goal to nil. Chu. Wen Chen King. Footed by Kande. Chang. Making Kitchi work at the moment. Can they cover plenty of ground? Kitchi are going to make another change in just a second. They're third. Chu. Oh, Kande. Down injured, maybe just taking a knock on his ankle. Did have that back problem which kept him out of the starting lineup for the first three matches. And I don't think they'll risk him any further. That's going to be Law that's coming on. Kande is off. Law Chun. Second appearance off the bench. Came on against Guangzhou in the last game a little bit earlier though, 11 minutes into the second half when he made his introduction. He's got eight minutes here just to help through this 1-0 win. You can see Desha giving out the instructions, just getting Law to sit there in that central midfield position. Good for Kitchi at the moment with the players they've got on the field. If you look at the back, Helio and Roberto, the two experienced defenders, Clayton, Raul Baena, and Deja, all experienced pros who, when you're under a little bit of pressure, you need those old heads just to try and calm things down a little bit. That's what they're doing here. Clayton. Loves to run with the ball. on that from Clayton. 
law was underneath it. And Joe get the ball away. Roberto. Or. Still full of running down that far side, taking off Chao Wen Che. Just overran the ball slightly. Look of amazement on Matur's face, but I think the ball had gone out of play anyway before he just nudged Chao Wen Che into touch. Another change to come for Guangzhou. It's another 16 year old coming, Chen Gen Chan. Making his debut in the competition. Wang Tian King is the player that's gone off. Arm around the shoulder from his coach. I'm sure all these players, for their efforts, will get a big pat on the back from the coach at the final whistle. Lost 2 0 against Cerezo. 2 0 against uh, 3 0 against Port. It's Dejan just offside. And then looks like they could be heading for back to back 1 0 defeats against Kitchi. Didn't quite bend his run enough there, Dejan. And again, turns and berates his midfielder, saying he wanted the ball played sooner. That's good play from Clayton. That was a little bit slow in midfield from Chang Jili. Here's Dejan. So just taking him a little bit wide, little chip. Tried to pick out Law, didn't have enough height on it, and Chang's able to gather. Still end to end. Grampus in action tomorrow, as we've already told you, they could become one of the first teams to book their place in the knockout stages. 100% record from their four games so far. Scored his 40th goal today from the penalty spot, Dejan Damjanovic. First time appearance about to come for Kitchi Cheng Chin Lung. He's coming on. Too many saves to make, Chang. A lot of the kitschy efforts have gone off target. Didn't have much chance with the penalty from Dejan. It's a well taken penalty. Handball. And here comes the change. Matt Orr is the player going off. So 23 year old Ching Chin Lung comes on. Another player that's been at Kitchi all his career, came through the youth system, had a loan spell at Hong Kong Sapling. Hasn't scored for nearly two and a half years. He's on for the final two and a half minutes or so. Chao Wen Che, falls back towards his own keeper. Wang Wen Chuan. Chu. Pressure from that front three now from Kitchi. Strong header from Roberto. Clayton on by Law. And ball again by Chu this time. Towards Damjanovic, who didn't 
didn't get a touch on that. He was well marshaled then by Chow Wen Che. Alex Chu knows his side are edging closer. Go to within a point of Cerezo Osaka. Cerezo on ten. Yellow card for Cho Wenche, not too much doubt about that one. Raul Baena bursting down that line. I think he made a little bit much of that. He's asking if he can have his shirt afterwards. I don't know if you're allowed to do that these days under the COVID protocols. I don't think you're allowed to exchange shirts anymore. Anyway, Joe Wen Che saying, I don't think it hurt you that much. But it is a free kick to Kichi and a chance in the final minute to maybe increase their advantage. It'd be harsh on Guangzhou, who've defended well so far. Into the near post, it was Pilio's header. He was too close to that front post to get the ball on target. That yellow card, by the way, for Zhao Wenche is actually the first yellow card in the match, which just backs up what we were saying about referees not being quick to go to the pocket in this competition. Be a foul on Tom. Two minutes added time, that's all at the end of the match. These teams will be back again in three days' time. There's not too much recovery time in this hectic schedule. A bit of recovery time tomorrow and then training on Tuesday, uh, Monday rather, before back into action on Tuesday. Penultimate match, of course. Chi. Aspirations of putting Hong Kong football on the map and getting into the knockout stages. to Kichi, this should be the last action of the match. Clayton comes across to take it. Raul Baena coming in to offer the short option in case they want to keep the ball in the corner. Chang with a bit of defensive organisation going on. Swung in by Clayton. Defending again. Dejan couldn't get on the end of it as the whistle goes. Another stubborn performance by this young Guangzhou side who must take plenty of credit for frustrating Kitchi at times. But it was that second half penalty. You can see what it's taken out of them. They've given absolutely everything. They still can't find a goal for the first time. They've gone four games without scoring. Chang couldn't keep a clean sheet. It was Dejan's second half penalty, 20 minutes from time, as it did in the first game, that proved to be the decisive moment in the 90 minutes. Three wins now out of four for Kitchi, who are just a point behind Cerezo, and those two look as if they're going to battle it out for top spot. It'll be a fascinating finish to this group, but for now, Kitchi can celebrate another victory. Dejan onto 40 goals in the AFC Champions League overall. He is the competition's top scorer. Full time then at the Thunder Castle in Buriram. It's finished Kitchi 1, Guangzhou 0.